Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Arbitrary 20. In this video, we're going to be talking about the changes to the Barbarian in the 2024 revision of D&D, mainly focusing on what these changes mean for old Barbarian builds and some potential new builds these changes might open up. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. The first change is to Rage. Rage can be maintained by using a bonus action or by forcing an enemy to make a saving throw, and you regain one expended use of Rage per short rest. We did see these changes in the playtest as well, and I'm not sure. That doesn't say down here either, but they also tried out in the playtest that the rage lasts 10 minutes, so we'll see if that made it through as well. But either way, it's nice that you're able to maintain the rage more easily and you get more uses of them. I think this is one of the biggest issues with the Barbarian, especially at those earlier levels. It didn't scale very well either, that you just didn't have enough rages. If you're doing like the higher end of encounters, like the six to eight per day, and you were playing a Barbarian, you would just never have enough rages. If you're doing one to two per day, you're pretty much always fine. It was kind of table dependent, but I think the Barbarian definitely did need more rages so this is a very good change and then they get weapon mastery also at level one i think for this one i'm just going to say refer to the last two videos on fighter and paladin i think the combo potential and my recommendations would be fairly similar and then for danger sense you no longer need to see or hear the effects to gain advantage on dexterity saving throws we saw this in the play test and it's just a nice quality of life change and then for the subclass changes the biggest change for path of the berserker was to frenzy instead of getting a bonus action attack you now get extra damage and that's represented by a number of d6 is equal to your rage bonus. You now no longer gain levels of exhaustion, which is huge. That immediately just makes this subclass playable. Other than that, Intimidating Presence and Retaliation have swapped places, with Intimidating Presence now affecting multiple creatures and Fright and Blasting up to one minute, without your need to spend an action to extend the duration, and Mindless Rage now ends the Charmed or Frightened condition instead of suspending it. So some really good changes there to the Berserker. This looks like pretty much what we saw in the playtest, and that Berserker was really strong. So that's pretty cool that this subclass went from nearly unplayable to one of the best. That's definitely the kind of thing I was hoping to see with this new revision, and I'm sure this will open up some new build possibilities. And then the Path of the Wild Heart, which was previously the Totem Warrior. The main change to the Path of the Wild Heart is that it's now a little bit more flexible. You can change your animal spirit choices whenever you rage or whenever you finish a long rest, so you're not just picking one and you're stuck with it. And I think you may actually want to switch now because they nerfed the bear totem spirit. I don't think it says it here, but they did say it in the video. We saw the nerf and the playtest. I'm not sure if that's the exact thing they ended up going with, but I think the ability will still be good, even if it's only a couple of resistances, but it will obviously be much more situational than it was before, just being everything except psychic. I personally don't think that ability was too strong, but I know a lot of people did, but the one thing I do like about that change regardless is that hopefully it will make the whole subclass usable rather than just you have to pick the bear totem because it's just the best, and hopefully those higher level abilities got some love as well, since I know usually most bear totem builds would stop at level 5 because they didn't care about the 6th or 14th level features. So hopefully those features are good enough to go to 6th and maybe even 14th level in Barbarian now. And then we have the new subclass, the Path of the World Tree. You're able to give out temporary hit points, shift enemies around the battlefield. That one could potentially combo with some weapon masteries, and you can increase your reach and versatility of your weapon mastery properties, so even more synergy with weapon mastery. And then the subclass's capstone allows you to teleport around the battlefield with your allies. It'll be cool to see how that works. Uh, I think the last one we saw in the playtest was basically just like a light version of like teleportation circle or plane shift. So something that's more useful in combat I think is a lot better for the barbarian. I mean it, it'd be cool if they got like the teleportation circular plane shift is like a ribbon feature, but I think they need something combat based there as well. So it's cool to see that they got that. Now, they don't give too many details here for the world tree though, so we'll just have to see how that one turns out. And then lastly, the Path of the Zealot, originally introduced in Xanathar's Guide. The Warrior of the Gods feature now helps you stay alive by giving you a pool of healing dice that you can roll as a bonus action, rather than making it easier to bring you back from the dead. I think I actually like this change. I feel like that feature was really only used for some cheesy combos with Sarah and things like that and in actual campaigns didn't come up that much. At least in my experience that feature didn't really come up in a lot of campaigns. The party would just have the money to do the revivify no problem or the barbarian just wouldn't be dying that often. So I think this change is overall going to be good for the subclass. This is also reflected in the Rage of the Gods feature which replaces Rage Beyond Death and gives you a fly speed, damage resistances, and the ability to expend the use of your rage to prevent you and your comrades from dropping to zero hit points. Obviously they're advertising this as a buff as they have done with a lot of things, which 
I'm not a huge fan of. I think if it's a nerf, they should just say it's a nerf. This one I'm actually a little sad about. I thought Rage Beyond Death was one of the coolest barbarian features in the game. It may have been a little strong, but I think there were definitely outs to it from a DM's perspective. So sad to see this one go, but it will be interesting to see how this new feature turns out. And then back to the base class features, we have Primal Knowledge. Uh, you get a proficiency and a barbarian skill of your choice, and then you can replace the typical ability score with strength and making certain skill checks while your rage is active. If this feature stayed the same, I assume the rage lasting 10 minutes feature also went through. If your rage only lasts a minute with this, then this isn't like that much better than like a guidance cantrip. But either way, I think this is a really cool feature. Just like the feature that fighters got at I think second level that lets them add their second wind die to a skill check. This gives your average barbarian something to use their features on outside of combat, which I think was really needed for this class as well as the fighter. And then the next change is at level seven to feral instincts. Uh, you can no longer act while surprised, even if you enter your rage, uh, which surprised was heavily nerfed. They talked about that in the fighter video. I think it is just disadvantage on initiative is all it is if you're surprised. No more like losing your turn or whoever's surprised doesn't get to act. It's just if you're surprised, you have disadvantage on initiative. I believe that's what they said in the fighter video. So I don't think that's a huge deal since you'll still be getting a turn anyway. And then instinctive pounce, you can now move up to half your speed as part of the same bonus action when you enter your rage. This will be really nice on a barbarian to help you get into melee on those larger battlefields. And then we have brutal strike, the replacement for brutal critical, which definitely needed a replacement, but it lets you forgo the advantage you get from your reckless attack to get a different benefit. So the first two options we get here at level 9 are Forceful Blow and Hamstring Blow. A forceful Blow sends your target flying 15 feet away from you, then you can follow up and move half your speed towards your target without provoking opportunity attacks. This could combo really well with the Push Mastery, which is the first thing I think of off the top of my head to push them 25 feet away. You could get a similar effect with the Slow Mastery as well. And then Hamstring Blow, you could reduce your target speed by 15 feet until the start of your next turn. I think in a lot of cases these will have a pretty similar effect, though I think the Forceful Blow is a little bit better. Reducing the target speed by 15 feet if they're just gonna stay in melee with you is a huge deal but if they are going for one of your allies and you can combo a hamstring blow with a slow mastery and almost just take away their speed you can pretty much guarantee that they're probably not getting there but i think the forceful blow has a lot more combo potential just like we were talking about with the psi warrior and the battle master getting that 25 feet of force movement can combo really well with spellcasters area of effect spells especially the ones that stay on the battlefield that you can push them into so yeah i think both of them will be good but i think forceful blow will have more combo potential. And regardless of which one you use, you're getting an extra d10 damage on the hit as well. But overall, I think Brutal Strike is a great change. I think it's more powerful than Brutal Critical and a whole lot more interesting as well. And then at level 11, we have Relentless Rage, which has also been buffed. You're still making that exceedingly difficult constitution saving throw every time you go down. But now instead of just getting one hit point, you get twice your Barbarian level, which at level 11 is fairly substantial. Depending on the enemy you're fighting, it might let you take an extra hit or two before you go down again. But when you do go down again, you'll just be able to make that saving throw again and get another twice your barbarian level in hit points. So this ability has gotten a whole lot better and will hopefully help make higher level barbarians a lot more tanky. And then at level 13, we have improved brutal strike, giving us two additional options. And I believe the damage from it increases as well. So first up, we have staggering blow. You can force your target to have disadvantage on the next saving throw it makes, and it can't make opportunity attacks until the start of your next turn. It says perfect for diving out of the way and letting your wizard light them up with a big spell. So giving them disadvantage on any saving throw is pretty huge. It seems like there's still some really powerful show-stopping spells in the game. See so if you can increase the chances of the enemy failing their saving throw, that will be pretty big. And the creature not being able to make opportunity attacks is pretty good as well for your allies that want to get out of melee. And then second, we have Sundering Blow. If you have a martial buddy fighting alongside you, this is a great way to team up. When you hit a creature with this ability, the next attack made against it by another creature has a plus five to hit. They say essentially you're trading off advantage to give your friend advantage. Advantage. But importantly, this is a plus five, so it will actually stack with advantage. So if you're using flanking rules and you have this, you'll be giving the ally advantage and a plus five to hit, and you'll be doing an additional 2d10 damage with your attack. That does actually sound really strong. I know flanking rules aren't necessarily a guarantee, but even without it, 2d10 extra damage and giving an ally plus five to hit is really strong. I think these two options are significantly better than the first ones, and I think they're easier to get good use out of as well. And then at level 15, we have Persistent Rage. 
previously, this feature made the Barbarian's Rage impossible to end early, short of knocking them unconscious. In the updated version, you'll still get these benefits, and your rage lasts for 10 minutes without you needing to extend it in any way. And you also now regain all uses of rage when you roll initiative. This only triggers once per long rest, but a full 50 minutes of raging should be able to get you to your next long rest. And it may have been confirmed in the video, but I guess that sentence there confirms that the rage does last 10 minutes. But either way, great change to persistent rage. And then we have improved brutal strike again. This is actually where the damage increases, so not at the previous one. It doesn't increase till here. And it also allows you to inflict two different brutal strike effects each time you hit. So they give some example combos here as well, sending an enemy flying into a blade barrier with disadvantage on their dexterity saving throw. So like I said earlier, you can send them into any area of effect spell, and I didn't think about that at the time. You can give them disadvantage on their saving throw as well. So you can push them 15 feet into any area of effect spell, and if it requires a saving throw, you can give them disadvantage on it as well. That's definitely really strong. And then the other example that they give is that you throw a hand axe and use forceful blow to send them 15 feet away and a hamstring blow to reduce their speed by 15 feet and then you can take a step back and they're just not going to be able to get to you and you could even combo this with weapon masteries as well so the push or the slow mastery you could actually just get rid of a creature's movement altogether if your ally has ray of frost you would be able to subtract 35 feet of movement with this slow and ray of frost so at that point most creatures are just going to have no speed and they're not going to be able to do anything even if they dash so a lot of really cool strategies strong combo potential here. I think the Barbarian overall is looking way better. And then lastly here at level 19, just like everybody else, we get the Epic Boon. And the boon they're showing here is the Boon of Irresistible Offense. It boosts your strength or dexterity by one, and you also get the ability to overcome resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage with your attacks. And then when you roll a 20 on the die for an attack roll, you get to deal damage equal to the ability score that you use to make the attack, which will likely be at least a 25 when you get access to Primal Champion at level 20. So it looks like Primal Champion stayed the same, so yeah, with this and Primal Champion, on critical hits you could add a 25, which is like a slightly better Brutal Critical. I think the main reason you would take this is for the overcoming resistance. I think the boon they showed in the fighter is probably better, just making yourself hit once each turn. I imagine if you have a magic weapon of some kind, you won't really need to overcome resistance a whole lot. That's if you only get one epic boon though. If you're playing to where you get two epic boons, then you can just take both of these and get the benefits of both. But yeah, I think this is a cool epic boon nonetheless, and it looks like that is it for the barbarian so let me know what you guys thought of the changes to the barbarian in the comments down below next time we'll be talking about the rogue so hope to see you guys there last time we talked about the paladin if you'd like to check that video out i'll leave it right here either way thank you guys for watching hope you have an awesome rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one